before we go into the nitty gritty of it, in present time, as mm. we speak, mm. Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso, mm. um, Niger, mm. Gabon, mm. under military rule, as we speak. Yeah. In all of this, we have seen, we'll talk about neocolonialism a bit, we have seen the international communities mm. saying democracy must stay. None of, from Germany to US to UK, just name it, none of these countries have raised alarm over the list of issues that has led to all of these issues. If you listen to Gabon during most recent, it's also talking about, hey, corruption, mm. false, uh, wrong elections, mm. elections that didn't follow due process, and all of that. Niger, the same thing. Gabon, they are all talking about a failure of democratic leaders in mm. this country. Mm. Going back to your first introduction, you said that coup can be seen from either side. Mm. It's a failed leadership. When mm. there's failed leadership, the military has a responsibility. You refuse to see it as illegal. Mm. You said when there's a failed uh, leadership, the military can come in internally to mm. protect the country mm. and by taking over. Mm. However, the international community don't agree with you on that. But let's bring you in now. Okay. Are you bringing me to analyze what lies behind it all? Yeah, the, that's where we are now, the mm. reasons and mm. the position yeah. of the internet. Like I said, they, in all of the news informations we have, none of them have condemned, spoken on the fact that these leaders have failed to provide democratic, actual democratic dividends to their people. All the military leaders who took over, rulers who took over, are accusing this democratic governor, governor or leaders of impoverishing the people, of corruption, and what have you. Mm. But the international community that are pushing, it has to be democracy, or you must return to civil rule, have never talked about the issues that led to the coup. Yeah. See, the, the coup can be explained just as they are trying from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. we, we, you, you have the the international community, then you begin to ask who are this international community? Okay. Is the international community monolithic? Are they one? Are they speaking the same voice? What drives their interest in Africa? Why are they interested in what is happening in Africa? So uh, they, 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 what causes coup or what has caused recent coup in Africa? All the other explanations are genuine, all the other reasons are genuine. But I want to locate it in one spot, and that spot is the spot of failed states okay. in Africa. What defines it to you? Um, I, will, I, will, I will explain. As at today, the number of African states that are not performing, whether they are military or not, that are not performing, providing governance, basic needs, places, give people water, they will be happy. Give people health care, they will be happy. Eh? Those things that are basic to the needs of people, to the happiness of people, are not being there. And because the state has collapsed, there is insecurity, there is division. And I'm saying that based on uh, studies, done by different organizations, we can say that 90% of African countries have failed. Under this failed state syndrome, it's called failed state syndrome, within this failed state syndrome, the center cannot hold. There will be, or it's not there will be, one of the indices, major indices of failed state is insecurity. Another is poverty. Another is lack of basic infrastructures. Another is insensitivity to even what uh, uh, are the enshrined principles of democracy. Simple rule of law, respect constitutional authority, respect the law, respect the process. What makes democracy an acceptable system of government is because it is based on regular contests of elections. But today, once the election is sabotaged, then that regular process that process of people competing election, once it is sabotaged, that's why I called it civilian coup. So a civilian coup is what is producing this current military coup. And it is because states in Africa have failed. Is it in security? Is it in human security? Even in general security, even in military physical security, there is instability in 
across Africa. But I want to tell you that this instability in, in African country is caused by external manipulation of African resources. France. You know, you know I asked you a question. Yes. Okay, I, I said, in all the things you have listed, yeah. all, look at the, the press statement from all the, whenever the military coup happens, yeah, yeah. The they're speeches. all talking about the same thing, failed failure in providing democratic dividend. You called it a failed state. Yes. And initially, like I said, to go back to the beginning when you're defining uh, coup, mm. you said that um, people see it as illegal, but for you, when the military takes over, they are taking over to continue, they, can, they are meant to protect externally or internally. Yes. So when they are taking over, they are protecting the internal structures of yes. the state so yes. that it doesn't go to waste completely. Mm. So now, whenever they take over, look at their press statements, they're always pointing at failed failure of the civilian rule, mm. rulers or leaders, mm. which is called democracy. Yeah. Now, why is it that the international community have never addressed the issues that led to military takeover? Now you want to talk about your colonialism. Be because and if, they, if they allow democracy as it is operated in their own clients, okay. if they allow the true democracy to operate, if they allow the true electoral politics to take place, if they allow rule of law as it is happening in their state, if they allow sovereignty mm -hmm. that is happening in their place to prevail in Africa, Africa will gradually stabilize. Okay. But it serves their interest, even when coup happen in Africa, it serves the interest of this so-called international community. Everyone is scrambling for what they will continue to get in Africa. Therefore, they are ready to shift their own problems into Africa. That's why we are afraid of the involvement of Russia, the involvement of the Wagner Group in African coups, because it will mean that the European war that is already going on will be shifted to the African soil. soil. And that is what we can know. Africa has been fighting European wars. Why Europeans are stealing African resources? Why we fight they sell arms to us? People don't look at the flow of arms. There's no African community, no African country that can even produce a gun. Apart from what Oka people used to do in those days, there's no modern technology for military weaponry in Africa. So okay. for that reason, you, you have who just is touched benefiting? The nerve. Yeah, who you have just who? touched a nerve. Yeah. And I say you have just touched a nerve because if you put the, all of this side by side, mm. If there is no weaponry in Africa, in mm. the whole of Africa, yes. from what you just said, mm. the, what they use in natural resources, used in producing these arms, mm. we learned that most of it are taken from the African soil. Of course. Of course. Even to run industrial systems in, Af in, in Europe and America, it's African crude oil and gas. This crisis we are seeing, even in Ukraine, NATO Warsaw uh, disagreement is still based on who is controlling resources. The geopolitics of resources is what is playing out. And we, that's why we are saying, see, even the coup plotters, I'm not by what we are discussing, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that coup is good. Or they are the saints. Uh -huh. But I'm saying that they are product of failure. And because they are product of failure, for the same reason that they were created to uh, protect the country. They are justified sometimes in order to keep the country stable. Which country would you have if everybody has scattered? So the military comes back to patch it again and hand it over to civilians. So everybody, what has happened in Africa is an interregnum. Some period of military rule, some period of... Uh, but why can't we overcome it? The only day we will overcome it is not to blame the army the military, but to blame civilian autocrats. L let's talk about poor governance, mm. impoverishment. Yes. I was telling someone that a few days ago I saw a video of, um, it was on Facebook, yes. it was a short video. Mm. I saw someone seated in a crowd with people surrounding him. It was a, it was a sand, mm. dirty environment, literally. Mm. So he bent over, picked something from the plates, an adult, mm -hmm. picked something from the, a plate, put it in his mouth, take the second, put it in his mouth, and then as soon as he stood up, 
children, several children, just a little plate, swamped that. That's messed with my head. I'm like, what is, what is going on here? Like, yeah. someone like Almaraj, Al Almajri will yeah, never end. I'm like, no, this is not. I, because I have never really seen, I have not lived in Connaught. Mm. I've not gone beyond Abuja, Kogi, and you know, some of this estate. And that's yeah. just been mostly on visits. Mm. Spend more time in Abuja, but all of this, there will be weddings and all of that. So I have never really ex been to Connaught or experienced this. That's like my first image of this almajiri thing, they were like they hiding under the tables in a restaurant, just waiting to pick for crumbs from the ground. Mm. That's messed with my head. Even just still talking about it, messes with my head. Mm. If do we actually have, rather, if we have humans who actually live such a debased life you are, you are, if, in Nigeria, that what you saw in that video, yes, is the true picture of life in northern Nigeria. No, that can't be true. I'm telling you that the Amajiri system is part of the religion, is part of Islam, is part of the culture of the people. Hold on. Yeah. We're talking about the reasons for coup. Yeah. If this picture is actually an authentic picture, mm. if that video is actually an authentic video of what actually plays out, mm. you do realize that something is wrong with us. Uh, see, let me just... If we have these people and they are called Nigerians that will operate in the same ge geopolitical, ge geographical space... If, I, if, if this program allows me to say what I want to say. I will say shame to all Northern Nigerian leaders, all those politicians from Northern Nigeria who have been head of state, ministers, governors, and so on. They should be ashamed of themselves. All Islamic leaders in this country should be ashamed of themselves that in this century, in this time, at this point in time, that the Amajiri system is deteriorating. The Admajiri system is a threat to the North. The Admajiri system is a typical indices for measuring poor governance. Uh, apart from them not going to school, they are being used wrongly even to perpetuate insecurity. So, so now, so when we talk about reasons for coup, uh, yeah. In the north right now, we've been fighting Boko Haram mm. for years. Mm. Those children are potential recruits into Boko Haram. In the southeast of Nigeria, mm. they are called unknown gunmen. Yes. From the north to south and west and eastern part of the country, there are skirmish, there are pockets of disunity, disjointedness. Yeah. Take this beyond the what is going on in other African countries now. How best can one define impoverishment as what Africans are experiencing? I'm putting that side by side with the reason why we have this recurrent coup that are being applauded by Africans. Even though the have international you, you community have noticed, don't... You have for, for, no matter what the international community say, they are saying as it will benefit them. Okay. Who you look at the coup and look at public jubilation. Yes. Look at the rate at which people are celebrating, even ladies. Yes. People are jubilating. And I can tell you, if there's a coup in Nigeria today, people will jump into the street to celebrate. Has, I, I, I was going to say, has it gotten that bad in Nigeria? Yeah. But I suddenly realized that the Almajiri children's picture just came to my mind. But I don't know how anyone is if I living define, through wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's go this way. You would think that Nigeria is not at war. Hmm? Okay. Because there's no battle line where two groups are fighting. Mm -hmm. It would be better if two groups were fighting than where so many... You have so many points of attack. Yeah. So that shows you that what is happening in Nigeria is insecurity per the worst. 
And once you have that situation in the country, the state fails when the center cannot provide protection for the country. And that is the duty of the army. So if the duty of the army has been taken away, mm. that what you now see are insurgent groups, what you now see are different uh, uh, guerrilla attacks, yeah. there's no more what is called IMT. That's, uh, 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 it has to do with military centralization mm -hmm. for operations. Okay. That is no longer existing in Nigerian army. You don't have a central command that is effective. That's why we are not able to overturn, overthrow uh, Boko Haram. And that is the problem in Niger, in Mali. Yeah. They accuse Bazoum. You are no longer, in fact, you are making it easier for the, uh, the Islamic. Islamic state and to... that, those, that thing was an arrangement that the Islamic insurgents will infiltrate into Nigeria. Yeah. You no, that's an arrangement to it, it, open up gap, the, the doors for them to eat. Yes, trade, yes. Because they killed about 17 of Nigerian yes, army recently. Yes, yes. The part of the problem of Bazoum is that Bazoum has closed his eyes for uh, insurgency, Islamic militancy, Fulani Islamic militancy to enter into Nigeria. And where are they targeting to destroy Nigeria and create an Islamic state? Now, now, now while all of these are still out there, Let's look at something real quick. ECOWAS. Let's leave African Union for one side. Let's look at ECOWAS. Mm. Do you think ECOWAS, being led by the Nigerian president, uh, uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, mm. do you think that he has a comprehension of what exactly is at play? He hasn't been a military leader. His international policies are neither here nor there as we speak. Mm. Now, in less than a few months in office, you have Niger to deal with, you have Gabon cropping up. Of course, that's not that ECOWAS, but it's in Africa. Mm. He came into office saying there's no room for coup d'etat. That was his first statement when he traveled for the, the, these meetings. And now, under, under how many months that has hit? With all of this facing these African leaders, Nana, as chairman of ECOWAS, you think he has a comprehension of what is on ground and what he needs to do to ensure that Nigeria don't get to the point where that becomes it, resolution. It, it I'm is, asking, with bearing in mind that 16th of September is just a few weeks away, just no, less than two weeks it, away. It is not about who he is. It's a, whether he has experience or not. It's about the fact that he shouldn't have been yeah, that is a major concern. That's what I'm asking. No, he, this question he shouldn't because... have been. Assume that it was the turn of Nigeria mm. to, uh, to, because the presidency rotates. Yeah. Even if it is the turn of Nigeria, are you going to bring somebody to head ECOWAS? whose legitimacy is being it's questioned? Being questioned at because home? why did Gabon I'd... happen? Yeah. Gabon just happened, just a yes. few days after their election. Yes. And nobody, they, they, the military didn't care whether there is AU, there is ECOWAS, or any other leader. They just took over, just a few days after their election. So and the reasons are the reasons he, why Nigerian uh, political parties are in court challenging President Mohamed uh, Bola yeah. Ahmed Tinubu's election. Yes. Where so is, said, where is he the, understands it? He doesn't have a path, he doesn't have the home legitimacy. He also doesn't have the regional legitimacy. But INEC may give him that legitimacy when they declared him the winner of the election, irrespective of all the odds. You see, when you legitimize a civilian coup, that what happened was a legitimization of a civilian coup by deliberate disorganization of the electoral process in order to pave way for somebody. He has been sworn in, yes, he's our president, but the matter is being tested. Why couldn't ECOWAS, why did ECOWAS hasten? It was a kind of rash decision to make him ECOWAS president. Even if it's Nigeria's turn, you look for, even if it is a diplomat, mm -hmm. to say, head this thing until uh, your president gets at least one year experience in office, mm -hmm. to understand national politics, understand where regional politics, and, and that is also going to show you that ECOWAS has failed as a regional organization. ECOWAS has failed economically. ECOWAS has failed politically. Part of the, uh, the agenda for the formation of uh, ECOWAS is to hold politics and economy 
in West Africa yeah. at such a level that Africa people within the region can begin to do business together, mm -hmm. remove all the barriers. It's an economic uh, uh, organization, but at the same time, it is a diplomatic, democratic okay. development organization. So with that at the back of your mind, let's talk about, like, we've talked about President Abdul Ahmed Tinubu, and yeah. um, you, you've been able to say, hey, he doesn't even have the state's home legitimacy, yes. so he doesn't, shouldn't even be the one heading ECOWAS. Yes. Now, with the handling of Nijeku, and the junta insisting on holding their ground, mm. and the economic impact that ECOWAS is watching to, that is playing out right now when it comes to the JECO as per the trade, the, 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 the blockages, the denial of access in, in and out of Niger and all the neighboring uh, mm. borders, and its impact. People are losing money, billions every day from what we read in the news. Mm. Do you think that ECOWAS truly understand that the economic base of Africa should not be tampered with in as much as they are trying to bring back a democratic rule in Niger, for instance. Mm. I've just told you that ECOWAS itself is a failure. African Union, we had high expectation mm -hmm. when AOU was dismantled for African Union. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I recall writing a paper on African Union and NEPAD, New Economic Partnership for African Development. That's NEPAD on the basis of which AU was created, has not succeeded. There is no new economic uh, development for Africa arising from AU. Mm -hmm. And uh, ECOWAS existed before AU. Mm -hmm. And ECOWAS has not, uh, apart from maybe traffic flow, uh, transborder crossing, and all that. Yeah, but, no, but even that was messed up during the present but, uh, Buhari's uh, time. Of course, I recall that I was on a television program when he granted visa on arrival. Mm. And I said, no, that visa on arrival was opening uh, Nigeria for all Islamic, yeah, Fulani people state. to yeah, infiltrate was, yeah. Nigeria. So it was not a good program at all. And it, is, it has contributed to the increase in all forms of vagrancy and Boko Haram and insurgency in Nigeria. Nigeria is under serious security crisis. Okay. Yeah.